I'm Katie, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm recovered after spending a number of years living with anorexia and bulimia, and this is my story. It didn't happen overnight, but started to like slowly become a bit more controlling with food and um, exercise, and it was completely harmless in the beginning. Um, it was really casual, I think we'd probably just call it mindfulness these yeah, days. Yeah. But over time, as like my body inevitably started changing and shrinking, um, people would compliment me and being the people pleaser that I was, I it's kicked off a bit of an obsessive game for me and I wanted to be better and smaller and take up less space and um, it eventually kind of took over me and uh -huh. became a bit of a surging eating disorder. I mean, anorexia is a really difficult one to hide. Mm -hmm. um, so it was pretty well known that mm -hmm. I had a problem, but um, if I would not admit it, um, and if if you if you if someone tried to speak to me about it, um, blacklisted. Like, yeah. Yeah. don't get too close. Don't sabotage my goals. Don't um, don't get in the way. Um, I had this idea that everyone was against me and. Um, they wanted to see me fail and wanted, just wanted me to gain weight and make, that would make me unhealthy, uh -huh. which I recognise I was unhealthy and they were trying to make me healthy. I, I owned it, I acknowledged it and that's uncomfortable, it requires you to lean on people and um, like I acknowledge that you have an issue and accept support. I struggled for a long time in not wanting to lose my eating disorder. Uh -huh. It was almost like my friend, like I wanted it. It was keeping me um, in check. It was yeah, keeping me yeah. organised mm. and um, in a nice controlled environment. Uh -huh. And um, being able to let that go was just like taking a breath of fresh air. For me, being in a same-sex relationship uh -huh. and dating like same sex people for like the last 15 years I didn't want my partner at the time to think that I was comparing our body types or I didn't mm -hmm. want her to be overly focused on her own eating or her own body um, mm -hmm. image and I felt really toxic. I've noticed that um, partners have been more sensitive to this kind of thing yeah when for me when it, when they're same sex because yeah. it does it does feel a bit more personal and i think it's so important that there are people um, and that there are peers within the organization that um, that are available for people who are having struggles because yeah you shouldn't have to explain how, like what's happening to even get to the point mm -hmm. of reaching understanding to get support. Uh -huh. um, so taking that emotional labour off someone who's actually battling something and to be able to call someone who just gets it. Uh -huh. For me, that I reckon that would have shaved a good five years off of what oh, I was so going that through. that was a huge barrier. We huge barrier. Yeah. It's like, no one gets it. I'm not going to talk about it. Like, you mm -hmm. don't even get it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad it exists. I think eating disorders can be so individualised and so prone to comparing yourself to other people as well that sometimes um, you invisibilise or you minimise um, the issues you're going through or you think, oh, I'm not, I'm not sick enough, I'm not thin enough, I'm not um, worthy enough to, to take up this time and use this support, someone else needs it more. And, and, and no, you are enough yeah, and you do yeah. deserve that. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I actually recently saw a tweet from Monica Lewinsky, uh -huh. which was talking about, you know, I, I might be drowning in 60 feet of water and you might be drowning in 30 feet of water, but mm -hmm. we're, we're both drowning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just to be reminded of, it's like everyone's worthy, uh, everyone's journey and struggle is important and deserves um, the same amount of support and, mm -hmm. yeah, and you should reach out. Mm -hmm.